and the plot thickens even further. The other day, we made a video talking about Tampa Bay Lightning Captain Steven Stamkos and how he was disappointed at the lack of conversations in the offseason regarding a potential extension. Now, you can go ahead and check out the last video, go over all the updates, talk about Stamkos, talk about his profile, talk about the points, talk about the contract, and whether or not it's worth it for the Tampa Bay Lightning to keep him around. But, as we had said, the plot has gotten thicker, and this is in a way that I didn't really expect. So, in the last video, we had discussed how Steven Stamkos is still a very legit NHL forward. 84 points last year, 106 points the year before that. He has gotten better, oddly enough, as his career has gone on. Ever since he has been freed from injury, he has been a top-of-the-line point producer. But when it comes to the Tampa Bay Lightning, you had the GM Julian Brisebois say that the team isn't fully able to comprehend where they're going in the next few years, and they would rather use this upcoming season, 23-24, to judge the players they already have, see what needs there are heading into the future, and then decide whether or not it would be worth it to keep Steven Stamkos around, an $8.5 million AAV player who will be 34 at the end of his current contract. Stamkos expressed his desire to the media this previous week, as well as to the team themselves at the beginning of the offseason, how he wanted to get something done before training camp. But because there were apparently no conversations happening, that's what he told the media, there weren't any conversations, it spells a lot of doom and gloom as to what the future could hold for Stamkos. Not just because this is a good player who has expressed that he wants to stick around, but because he's a good player whom the Tampa Bay Lightning had not even considered giving a phone call to. That's the way Steven Stamkos portrayed this situation in the media, that there were no conversations. I told the team, I want to come back, I want to get a deal done, I want to sign a contract, but they didn't even talk to me. Nothing. Now, you could bring up whether or not this is actually, like, you know, proper business practice. I get it. It is a business. Hockey is a business. This is not a humanitarian organization. People don't care about feelings. They care about making money. But when it comes to the Tampa Bay Lightning and the way they're treating their captain, this entire thing leaves a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. And it gets even more sour when you acknowledge Elliot Friedman's comments on the recent edition of the 32 Thoughts podcast. Take a look at this tweet made by NHL Watcher. Elliot Friedman said on 32 Thoughts, I know people who are around Stamkos, and I'm talking to a few other players. Some of them told me that there is this underlying belief around them that Tampa wouldn't be crushed if Stamkos left the Bolts. You then had yourselves another reply saying, oh, he's going to be a saber. And NHL Watcher replies saying, yeah, Friedman mentioned the last time he was a UFA, it came down to Toronto and Buffalo before he re-signed in Tampa. Now, of course, this does not guarantee definitively that there's going to be a trade or a free agency bid by Toronto or by Buffalo and Steven Stamkos is going to end his career somewhere over there. That's not guaranteed, but it's very weird how this idea has spawned out, where Friedman has heard this so much that he's comfortable saying it on his podcast that, yeah, I don't know if the Lightning would be too butthurt if Stamkos were to leave. Like, this is completely different. We talked about in the other video, oh yeah, big name free agents that become UFAs and they leave their teams and all the superstar fandom that they had built beforehand. Tavares, Gaudreau, is Stamkos next? This is completely different because we're in Johnny Gaudreau's situation, the Calgary Flames were biting tooth and nail to try to get this guy back, but he ended up leaving because he wanted to be closer to home. And with John Tavares, who pretty much left for the same thing, there was a lot of deceit there. He said that, yeah, I want to stay here. I'm happy being an Islander. I want to resign. And because the Islanders and the fans were so believing that he wanted to come back, they didn't trade him away at the deadline. And then he walked to free agency, left New York, went home. This is different because Stamkos is already saying more blunt comments than these other two guys had before. Oh yeah, this is not the cookie cutter. I'm here right now in Tampa Bay. We'll see what happens. I'll let my agent handle it. And I'm thinking about this year right now, I'm not thinking about the future yet. That's the cliche answer. Stamkos was like, no, I want to come back. 
I'm disappointed in my team for not starting the conversation on contracts because I already told them I want to come back. His expectation was that he would be re-signed by the time training camp started, but guess what? At the time of recording this audio, there still is no deal. Maybe it's because he's old. Maybe it's because the Lightning can't commit however million dollars it's going to be to a guy who's going to be 34 at the end of his contract. Maybe they don't want to go long term and damn themselves with a 38-year-old guy who's going to be making six or seven million who's not going to be a six or seven million dollar guy. It's fair to acknowledge that there might be a decline on the horizon. Superstar players rarely decline, but it is possible. If Stamkos continues playing till he's 38, 39 years old and he continuously gets like 60, 70 points, that's probably reasonable. But the Lightning are being cautious with a reason here. It makes sense why they wouldn't want to immediately throw the book at this guy. But then again, you have to acknowledge, I mean, Steven Samkos is one of the best Lightning players of all time. And he has been the captain for a while, too. There's a reason why this is a big conundrum. So it gets even crazier when you acknowledge that apparently the Lightning wouldn't even be too ticked off if Stamkos were to go away. They wouldn't be crushed if he left. This comment reads that it's more of a boo-hoo if Stamkos leaves, rather than, oh boy, our captain of however many years, our 60-goal guy, our franchise-defining superstar is leaving. That sucks. It's more of a, uh, whatever. Like, we wouldn't be crushed. We wouldn't be crushed if he left. It's fine. It's the natural progression of time here, catching up to him. And Friedman to go out there and mention that Buffalo and Toronto were the other two teams that were involved in this Stamkos re-signing process eight years ago in 2016. Bringing that up is a crazy move because now everybody's going to be thinking about it. Yeah, Toronto, Stamkos, you got Tavares, Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and Stamkos. Yeah, let's get that done. And then there's the Buffalo argument where it's like, yeah, they've got a lot of cap space. They've got the money to pay guys what they want. We already made the other video asking if they're going to offer sheet Trevor Zegras. So Buffalo, if you really wanted to shell out some extra bucks, not that you have too much extra dough. I mean, they've got like $40 million in cap space next year, but they have to re-sign Darlene, Power, and a few other really notable names. So it's going to be tight, just not as tight as, let's say, the Toronto Maple Leaf situation is going to be. If William Nylander leaves, does Steven Stamkos come back in return? In fact, why wait? Why not make the trade right now? If you're confident that you're not going to be able to re-sign Nylander, and if the Lightning are not willing to commit the dollars to a guy in Steven Stamkos who's 34 at the end of the year, then why not make the trade right now? Obviously, I'm just spitting off the top of the dome here, but I'm just kind of tossing some ideas out there. Because apparently the Tampa Bay Lightning wouldn't be all too crushed if Steven Stamkos were to leave. Maybe they already thought about this enough where they're like, yeah... We can just let him ride out into the sunset. It's fine. Our team is better off using our cap dollars over the next few years on other pieces throughout the lineup that in which we'll identify which areas of need we have throughout this season and think about the team in the future without Stamkos because he's old. Like, the guy had 100 points just two years ago. It's not like he is a bad player. Sure, declines are inevitable, especially for guys in their mid to late 30s, but superstar players always find ways to get it done. I don't know about you, what's the over-under on Steven Stamkos at age 37 getting 25 goals or 65 points, but he's probably not going to be a bum at that point. Like, he had already battled his battles, he's come back, he's been healthy the past few years, and he's been good. He has been very, very good. So, I don't know, just this idea where the Lightning are not believing in their captain. That's pretty disappointing, isn't it? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the idea of the Sabres being so willing to let this drag out? Or not the Sabres, my gosh, the Lightning being willing to drag this out potentially and not being all too crushed if their captain were to leave their team. Like, circumstantially, I could understand if this was some other captain that didn't really accomplish much, whatever, but like, this is Steven Stamkos. He's a multi-time Stanley Cup champion, even further time Stanley Cup finalist, a guy who has had so many awards and trophies, he has been a phenomenal player, he's a Hall of Fame guy. What's the deal with this? Like, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, I hope you enjoyed this video, and bye.